Hello everyone. Welcome. Nice to have you guys here. If you're here, say hello. I'd love to hear from you. We are live for the Great Bead Extravaganza. I am super excited. Um, darn, I forgot to share this real quick. One second. I knew I was forgetting something. <laughs> I need to share this to my page. If you're here, let me know where you're watching from. I'm looking forward to seeing some new people and old friends. All right. Of course, there's always some technical thing that I forget to do. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Okay, here we go. Got that all taken care of. Hi. <laughs> Have you guys been having a fantastic time? I hope so. Hope you've been learning a lot this weekend. It is so much fun to have a free retreat right from your, um, from all over the country and right into your uh, bead studio, living room, a dining room, wherever you guys are watching. And so if you're new here or new to me, Hi, I'm Heather Powers from Humble Beads, and I'm a bead maker, a jewelry designer, an author, illustrator, and my official job title is Creative Muse. So it's my job to inspire you guys, and I do videos every Wednesday. So if you like what you see today, join me every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on my Humble Beads page. What we're doing today, you guys saw on the preview, I am making French beaded leaves. And so we're going to be playing with seed beads. Um, Abby did such a fabulous job with her bezel tutorial just now, um, but this is going to give you all the joy of seed beads and wire wrapping. So using seed beads in a little bit different way. So we're going to be using 24 gauge wire and 11 size 11 seed beads. That's all you're going to need to do the uh, beaded leaves. And then if you want to do the necklace, I have kits for those. And then of course you can just throw things together from your own stash too. So I think I just wanted to mention, you guys don't forget to go over to the Great Bead Extravaganza um, page and group to sign up for the giveaway. And Sarah, I see you're here. If you want to post the link to the Great Bead Extravaganza, if people are watching on my page or on Facebook and they don't know about the Great Bead Extravaganza, they can sign up to win the three swag bag giveaways that we have. Um, and Humble Beads has donated a $50 gift certificate to each bag. So you definitely want to sign up for that because who doesn't love a little bit of free shopping, right? And we also have two giveaways that I'll be giving at the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned until the very end when we'll be doing the giveaways. I am going to get started. So here is the bird um, that we're going, we're going to be doing a bird pendant and earrings and we'll be doing the leaves first. I'm going to show you guys how to make a large leaf and two small leaves and then we're going to put together the necklace and the earrings and hopefully I can get that all done in an hour. So um, you can use different size seed beads. You'll just have smaller or larger um, smaller or larger leaves, depending on what kind, what size seed beads you use. So these are size 11s, and this is a, a bead spinner. And if you haven't seen a bead spinner, it's pretty fun to use. I'm gonna show you guys how to get the wire, I mean the beads on the wire very quickly with the bead spinner. And if you don't have a bead spinner, put on your favorite music, uh, <laughs> make yourself a cup of tea, get really zen, and you need to string 12 inches of beads onto your wire. So 24 gauge wire, and I'm using para wire in the natural brass color. You can use any wire. Um, you can use craft wire, you can use copper wire, or um, some of the colored wire, para wire. So all of that. And you know, you can just string them by hand, no problem if you don't have a bead spinner. But sometimes having a the right tool for the right job just makes things so much easier. So you're going to take your wire and make a curve. And usually these come with a big long needle. We're not going to use the needle that comes with the bead spinner. And this is what it looks like on the side. It's like two pieces of wood put together that spin. And we're going to be spinning um, clockwise. And we have our beads are going to be jumping on. I have it just resting on the top 
of my wire, I mean my seed beads, I am not sticking it deep into the little well here. I'm just letting the wire rest on top of this as I spin around and letting gravity do its job here. It's those little beads just jump right on and you can see I've strung quite a bit already before the video so I'm just going to do a little tiny bit more and you can do one to two inches at a time and it gets it done super quickly. Well hello sister Karen and I love that you guys are watching together across the country. What a fun way to spend time together. So here I've strung a little bit more than 12 inches just because I don't want to have to string more. I won't really need 12 inches for the project. And what I do is I usually string um, directly onto the spool so I can just cut off what I need. But if you um, don't have a spool and you're just using smaller pieces, I would say use at least um, a foot of wire per leaf, 12 inches. The first thing you're going to do is take your round nose pliers here and we're just making a little stopper. So I've just wrapped that around a few times around my chain nose pliers just to get a little stopper here. Oh, Kathy, I'll be um, mentioning my free beads and specials at the end of the episode. So, or, you know, not the episode, but <laughs> the end of here. Okay, we're going to start with nine beads in the center. And so I'm going to pull nine beads down here. Make sure I got nine. Okay. And for this top part... So you have this long line here and you want this part to be long enough that it's going to be able to fold under the whole length of your leaf and wrap around a few times. So you want to have a good um, three inches just to be safe. You can always cut off extra wire, but you can't add extra wire. So, <laughs> so you're going to start with this little um, loop at the end. Then I have nine beads down here at the bottom and now I'm going to make a loop here. Nothing fancy, just a loop. It's about uh, two inches big and I'm going to, oop, I wanna, I'm gonna twist it like a twist tie. I'm just gonna twist it around three or four times and I want my um, wire, my working wire that I'm gonna be working with to be heading to the left. So this is what we have. We have our loop at the bottom and then a few um, twists. Don't worry if they're close together or not. I, you can see mine here are a little, a little um, farther apart. And now this is um, going to be our working wire. This is where all the seed beads are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little bit extra wire here. I want these to stay down, so I'm going to be holding those. And I'm going to add just enough seed beads to come to the same, um, same level as the first row that I have. And now I'm going to take this, wrap it around our um, middle wire here, and now I'm going to wrap this around and pull it downward. So when I wrapped it around, I have my wire going down. You guys see how that is? So I've wrapped it and it's going down. And now I'm gonna add, or let the beads fall. And you guys, this is gonna take you a little bit of practice to make really good ones. So doing that angle when we go to the edge, that's gonna give us a more pointed leaf and so I'm going to take this I have it I'm gonna wrap it around and over and when I pull it it's gonna be pulled down can you guys see that nice and clearly let's see there we go and I do have some printed directions I'll be posting later today for you guys with the step-by-step -step so you can see it um, you know because sometimes when you have it here printed in front of you it's a little bit easier to follow 
Okay, so same thing. I'm going to wrap this around the middle wire and have it going down. So I'm pulling the wire downward. And again, just getting those beads as snug as I can right next to each other. And deciding if I want so just to make extra the, the wrap comes forward or backward. Okay, the wrap goes around the back and then comes forward. Great question. So it's going around the back first and then over. So the wrap goes forward, yes. First to the back and then forward. Okay. And so I'm wrapping it around that middle wire and then pulling down. And now this last one, I am going to be wrapping it around three or four times underneath the bottom because that was our last little piece there. And now I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to do this three more times, guys, so don't feel like you have to uh, get it in the first, the first go. Okay, now we're going to take this a middle wire that we had and I'm going to bend it down. So I'm bending it down to the bottom here, making it as straight as I can, having it as close as I can to the beadwork. And now I'm going to take this one and also wrap it around three or four times. And we're going to trim that and you want to make sure you're pinching these little ends into the wire nice and tight so that they're not going to poke anything. And now this little loop we're going to cut it in half and I'm going to take the right hand side Do you have a code? Um, no I don't have a code you guys I I will share my um, little free bead that I have with you guys after um, the video because I don't want you running off to shop yet <laughs> okay so I wrap that around my pliers two times so I've done a double loop. Oh, I feel like I'm not quite getting that quite clear enough. So we wrapped it around two times and I have the double loop. I'm going to grab it with my chain nose pliers and I'm going to be adding a few wraps underneath the bottom here to kind of fill out any spaces that I have. Make sure you pinch in that end of that wire. And then I'm going to take this one and wrap the same way, just filling in any little empty spots to make that messy wrap on the bottom a little bit thicker. Okay, so here is my leaf. Now what I usually do, or what I like to do, is I'll pinch the bottom so that it has kind of a little bit of a shape. Okay, I'm gonna do this two more times. But this time I'm going to do it, that one we did with nine beads in the center. And now the next one we're going to do is, let me check, I think it's five beads. Yeah, five beads in the center. So the first thing you're going to do, I feel like, I feel like my table's competing with me. One second, let's see if I can get a... No. I'll just try to hold it up closer. There we go. Oh, your camera gets a little out of focus so close. How's that? There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the little loop on the top here. And this is gonna get um, cut off. This is just so that your beads don't fall off. And we're going to add five beads on here. And remember, you want to leave two to three inches on the top. And then I'm going to do a loop that's about two inches, uh, one and a half inches is what I really go for. And I want my wire 
to be heading to the um, left of my beadwork. So when I twist it, I want to make sure that it's going to the left when I'm done. And I just twisted it two or three times here. I'm out of frame. <laughs> Explaining, getting everything in frame, and uh, making sure I can see the seed beads myself. It's a little tricky. Forgive me, guys. Okay, so I have just enough to go to the same level as my first row, and I'm going to take it and wrap it around the middle wire and down. So it's going around the back to the front, and then when it gets to the front, I'm pulling the wire down at an angle. Adding uh, seed beads to the side here for the second row. And I'm going to um, pull it around and down. Adding my next row. And I'm turning my beadwork um, backward, I mean upside down, and I'm turning it in my hand as I go so that it feels comfortable to me, so. Um, I don't know if there's a sew to that. I'm just letting you know that, <laughs> that I keep turning the beadwork so that I'm doing the twists um, on the top here. So I turn it upside down so that it will be on the top. Okay, wrapping this around. This is going to be my last row here. So I'm going to pull it around the middle wire and make sure it's heading at an angle downward. And here is where I'm going to end my beadwork. So I'm going to wrap it several times around the bottom. Trim it off. And you got to make sure you pinch in the end because you don't want that catching on anything when people are wearing this. Okay, now this center line, I'm going to fold it down, center wire, and make sure it's pressed against my beadwork nice and tight. And I'm going to wrap it several times around the little wrap that I have going on here, my messy wrap. And I'm going to trim that off and pinch it closed. Then our loop here, we'll cut it in half. The um, left side I am going to wrap around two times around my pliers to get a nice little double loop. Since we're using such thin wire, Having the double loop gives it a little bit more strength in your jewelry design. And um, these little leaves work best for charms or pendants um, and not for things that are structural. They don't have enough strength to be like connectors or anything, but they can hang off stuff so just you, fine. So you must not know if there's a rule on how many rows to add. Um, no. Somebody asks how many, is there a rule about how many rows to add? And no, you can make these as big or as little as you want. So the only thing I would say is um, something to keep in mind is that you want your row, you start your row on the left and you want your row to end on the right so that you'll have an even amount of rows here. Okay, and now I'm going to pinch this and make that into a little bit more of a leafy dimensional shape. You can leave them flat too, but I, I prefer the little pinched leaf shape here. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. And I think I'm gonna add just a few more seed beads. Now my wire's gotten a little twisted on here, so I'm gonna cut that off. So we're gonna add a few more seed beads So what do you guys think? Is it clear enough? Do you think you can give it a try? Um, I'm going to go through it one more time, step by step, and then we're going to put together some jewelry.
So if you're using the bead spinner, you want it to stay on the top of the beads. If you put it in here and really shove it in there, your little beads are going to fly everywhere. So I am holding it with my left hand, the wire, and spinning the bead spinner with my right hand. And I'm right-handed, so it'll probably be opposite if you are left-handed. And it, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, very easy. Um, does Softflex carry these, Sarah? The little bead spinners? If anyone in the TGBE group sells these bead spinners, feel free to post your link for those. Um, they're, they're, um, they're not a huge investment. And if you want to get into playing with seed beads, they are definitely a time saver. Okay, that's enough. Okay, first things first is we're going to do the little tiny wrap on the top as a bead holder so that our beads don't fall off. And I'm going to put five beads on my middle wire here. And then we're going to make a little loop on the bottom. And this loop on the bottom is going to end up being the, um, the wire wrapped loop. So we need about an inch and a half for this. And I'm just going to twist this a few times like a zip tie. I mean, you know, one of those little things that you put on your bread. <laughs> a twist tie. There we go. Okay. So my wire is starting off on the left. And I'm going to add, usually it's five to six seed beads. Just enough to go over the top here. And I'm going to... Here's the middle wire, and this is the working wire. I'm going to take the working wire and wrap it around the back and to the front. And when I have it in the front, I'm angling the wire downward. I'm going to add my beads. This one got a little puffy. Okay. And just fix that up just a little bit. Okay, so my my loop on the top wasn't quite tight enough, so I just pulled that a little bit tighter. Okay, I'm going to get down to the bottom, wrapping it around and to the front, and making sure it's angled when it's at the front. And repeating the same thing with this next row. So adding enough seed beads to get to the top here. And I'm going to wrap it around the middle to the front and make sure it's angled downward. And this one has a little bit of extra wire showing in the middle going to stress about it. <laughs> you will um, you will have some that turn out better than others and that's okay. All right so this is going to be my last row. So these ones have um, one two three rows from the center for the smaller ones and I did three rows for the big one too but it had um, more leaves to start, uh, more seed beads to start with, and so that why it, that's why it's a little bit bigger. Wrapping around three to four times, ending in the back, cutting that off, pinching my little tail, and then I'm going to take this wire, and this leaf got a little little chubby. That's okay. Just like in nature, every leaf is a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to take this 
and wrap it around again. Well, this one I'm wrapping around. Trimming it off with the flush cutters and pinching that in. And then the last step is to cut this in half. The left side you're going to wrap around your pliers two times so that you get that double loop. You want to make sure those wraps are right next to each other. And then I'm going to hold on to my loops with my chain nose pliers and wrap around my little brambly wrap here. <laughs> and then the last little bit here, I'm going to wrap it a few more times, filling in any extra little spots that look like they need a little bit of thickening up. Sometimes there's a little part on the wire wrapping that will look a little bit sparse, so that's where I'm trying to aim that wire so that it looks nice and even. Okay, and so this leaf is a little bit different than the other one. I almost don't know if you could put these on a wire going back up, though. Um, I don't know. You could give it a try. <laughs> um, Sophia, this is 24 gauge wire. So this one looks a little funky, but I'm just going to have to live with it. Usually what I do, if I'm making a pair of earrings, I'll make at least three little leaves so that two of them will look pretty close to, <laughs> to the same. So I always have like a little spare just because it's hard to get things to look the same. You know, earrings are supposed to be sisters, not twins. So keep that in mind. All right. So let's make some jewelry now. We're going to be using my brand new, fresh out of the oven this weekend, uh, Bluebirds. And so the sample that I made for the project and the first batch of kits were chickadees and now I have bluebirds so there's a few kits left on the bluebird uh, of the bluebirds on the website and I will give you guys that info the in seed bead size? just a few minutes the seed bead size is size 11 seed beads so I used 24 gauge wire and size 11 seed beads all right so we're going to start with 18 gauge pair of wire and this is the Vintage Para Wire in the um, art metal color. So it's a nice dark gray, gunmetal gray color. And I'm going to stick this through my pendant with about an inch and a half, two inches on the back. I'm going to fold these two up, one going forward and one going back. And I'm going to take the longer wire and bend it so that it's going up. So this is, I'm going to put beads on this and make a knot on the top. So this bottom one, I'm going to wrap around two times tightly on the bottom here to make that little wrap. I'm going to stick my pliers in here, and just push that down a little bit. off the end and pinch this closed and I have any uh, 10 millimeter English cut check glass bead that I'm using for the top and I want to do a wrap on the top of this check glass bead so I'm going to bend that forward Wrap it around my pliers to make the loop. Oop, there we go. And I'm going to hold the loop while I twist this around nice and tight two times. And I'm going to cut this off in the back. Same thing with pinching the little wire so that it's not sticking out. And there is my bail on my pendant. 
And now I'm going to take this huge um, rectangle jump ring. We have these in the shop. And I'm going to take my two pliers and open it up side to side, just enough to put the pendant on there, Ooh, which is just a little bit more than I did. Now I'm going to close that. Oh, one more thing. I want to throw your leaf on here. So my leaf, I have the leaf going front, I mean side to side. So I'm just going to twist that so that it's going front to back so that it will fit on my necklace correctly here. I'm going to slide that on and close these guys up. And now I'm going to cover this little, see that little hole? <laughs> I want to cover that up. I don't want that showing. So I'm going to grab a tiny bit of 20 gauge wire. So this is 20 gauge, slightly thinner in the same finish. And this is from Para Wire. You can use any um, craft wire that you want for this, but my favorite is Para Wire. And I, I cut about two inches. I don't need that much, but I just always feel like it's better to have a little bit extra to play with. I'm putting this in the center and pulling it around tightly to get my loop, uh, to get this looping around. And I'm going to stick this through and pull it up with my pliers. Oh, thank you. That's why I have my assistant here to keep me in frame. <laughs> I'm going to pull that through several times. And I do want these to be as close to each other as I can. And three to four is good enough. I'm going to pinch that. I'm going to push this down so that there's not that little gap showing. Because I don't really want a little gap. Oh, not my best wire wrapping, but that's what happens when you're live on the video, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to pinch that closed. And I'm actually going to turn that around so that the ends of the wire end up in the back here and not on the front of my pendant. There we go. Okay, so that's all covered up now with the 20 gauge wire. We used 18 gauge for the bottom pendant here and the next thing we're going to add is a little leaf. I'm going to put this little leaf kind of so that it covers up a little bit of that wire wrapping that we did. It's a little messy, I admit. I don't mind messy wrapping, but um, sometimes it's nice to do a little layering. So I have this little copper charm, and I'm going to throw this on with a 7 millimeter jump ring. And those are the components of our pendant. And I'm going to show you guys how to add the leather and how to do an adjustable knot really quick. This is 36 inches of 1.5 millimeter leather. I am folded it over, so this is the center of the 36 inches, and I'm putting it through the jump ring to make a loop. And I'm going to pull the two ends up so I have my loop in the back and the two strands in the front. And I'm going to take the left hand strand and I'm going to put it through the right hand side loop coming from the back to the front. 
I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So this is the right hand strand is going to go up through the left hand hole here. And I'm going to hold on to this as I pull it tightly. And this is called a cat's paw knot. And it's just something a little bit different for your leather. It, um, it wears really nicely and it looks pretty too. So that's the cat paw knot. All right, now the back we're going to take the two ends and fold it over about six inches. I think I have a little bit extra leather here, but that's okay. And then at about three inches, I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to take the leather, the end of the leather, and I'm wrapping it around both um, the loop and the other, the other side of the leather. I'm going to do that three times and then stick the end up through the loop. Hold on to the end of that leather and pull down tightly. And then I'm going to just trim that off and repeat on the other side. So at about three inches, I'm folding it over and I'm taking the little end here and wrapping it around the loop and the leather, um, the other side of the leather, leather cord. And I'm going to wrap it around three times and then go through my loop and I'm holding on to the end and pushing down tightly or pulling tightly and pushing down to tighten up that loop and I'm going to trim the end off here and this is your adjustable loop so to make it longer you're going to pull the ends here so you just pull on the ends and that will make it longer if you want it shorter you grab onto the knots and pull the knots and that will make your cord shorter so that's the adjustable knot for your necklace and super cute super fun so we have these kits um, if there's any left if not I have the chickadees and the components and you guys can find that stuff at humblebeads.com I'll show that again in a minute after we do the ear wires, I mean the earrings, um, free gift with purchase for this weekend are every $50 that you spend, you get a set of um, disc beads, so no limit. So every $50 that you spend, you automatically get a set of disc beads, no code needed. We automatically add that to your order and we do combine orders if you've ordered earlier this weekend. Um, someone asked, is this a barrel knot? Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> Without, um, some people use a little tube to make the barrel knot. This is just a little preformed one. So I think it's the same. All right. So these guys are what we're going to use to make our earrings and I'm going to grab the blue to match my blue jay here and if you're new here um, or new to humble beads I make my beads out of polymer clay so this little guy actually comes from an antique bird um, I made a mold from him and I hand paint each one and then we have disc beads that I've made by hand uh, from polymer clay. So polymer clay is my jam. That's what I make all my um, jewelry out of, uh, beads, sorry. And then we sell check glass and other components to go with our items. I'm going to be using the 20 gauge, and, sorry, the 18 gauge wire. Ooh, and I'm also going to be using two O beads. So I'm going to grab these in brass color or gold color. O beads are just little glass beads um, that work really well as spacers. So I'm going to cut about three inches off here and I'm going to use 
my little one step blooper because I love it and it um, gives me really nice even loops. So you just put your wire in there and pinch it closed and it gives you the perfect little loop every time. And I'm going to throw my bow bead on there, my humble bead, a six millimeter spacer that's a flower, leafy little dude, and dude, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> and the top piece here I am going to do with my pliers, just because it's harder to get the the little bead in there. I mean the pliers. Some people want to know where they can rewatch this. Oh, some people want to know where they can rewatch this. Guys, you can rewatch this in the Great Bead Extravaganza group, the page on the Humble Beads page, or the Humble Beads um, YouTube page. So this is available to watch anytime in all three of those pla uh, all four of those places. So lots of options for rewatching the video. And I will also post in the on my Humble Beads page and in the um, sorry the group where to not where to <laughs> trying to do too many things at time the directions so you guys can see um, step by step here how to make the leaves with the written directions too. Sometimes it helps to see see pictures of it and read the directions also. You know, it takes lots of lots of different ways to learn how to do something. Okay, so I just added the leaf at the bottom and my ear wire at the top. And that's all it takes to make this uh, the bluebirds should be on my site um, if they're um, give me a few minutes to check again and um, I put up the first batch and I might have to put up my second batch so there is the earring super simple super easy I'm not gonna make well I do have a few minutes I can make the other one So any questions guys, I've gone over everything I needed to go over for these two projects. I'm just going to whip up the other earring real quick here for you. Just because it's nice to see and I do have a few, few minutes left. So adding the O bead, the disc bead, the little spacer, and oh these are 11 millimeter bicones. I don't think I said that these little guys on the top. They're 11 millimeter um, bicones and we do carry all of these on the website. I don't carry the wire but other TGBE peeps have wires so you can check out their um, their spots. Okay I'm gonna make my little loop here on the top. Can I just this wire for the earring? The earrings, I'm using 18 gauge wire, and I'm using brass uh, earring wires. They're my favorites. They don't have any nickel Someone or to know where that loop what? Uh, what the loop cutter is called. I mean the loop maker. Oh, the loop maker. Um, this is called a one step looper, and Abby, do you guys at the bead shop carry these? I know, I remember one of our TGBE people carry these. It might be Softflex or the Bead Shop or um, the Bead Place. No, Abby's is the Bead Place and <laughs> Kate's the Bead Shop. So check out um, the TGBE people first and find out. This is a 1.5 millimeter looper, one step looper. Okay, I, I, um, turn the little wire front to back. I don't know if you guys caught that, so I wanted to let you know that I turned the little loops front to back so that they fit on here the right way. Okay. 
and I'm just using the 18 gauge wire for aesthetic purposes because I like the thicker look of the wire. You could also use 20 gauge for the earrings. They don't need to have as much um, strength as say a necklace piece would. Okay, so there's my cute little earrings that match my necklace and my necklace. We have um, all sorts of beads. You guys could use anything in your stash to make these little earrings though. And also my necklace. I kept things really simple this time around so that you guys could mix or match whatever you have available. But we do have uh, four different birds. I have chickadees, the bluebirds, cardinals, and sparrows on the website. And so that's at humblebeads.com. Oh, not that one. <laughs> we'll get to that. Humblebeads.com. That's where you're going to find beads and kits. For every $50 you spend, you will get a free set of disc beads. And I always try to match them up to your order so that you, um, you know, you can make something matching <laughs> with the items that you've ordered. And that's $50. Every $50, you will get a pair of disc beads. No limit on how many you can get. And then, um, what else? Oh, don't forget to enter the giveaway on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. I do Bead Table Wednesday, and I do a free project every week with Bead Table Wednesday, so tune in for that. And I also have a fantastic little private group for Humble Beads, and you can look up Humble Beads VIP Party Group here on Facebook and join the party over there. We do a monthly challenge every month, and this is our January theme. So I like to keep you guys nice and inspired over there. And it's a super friendly group and a great place to share your creations, ask questions, and make friends. So definitely join the Humble Beads VIP party group. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have any questions now, we still have a few minutes, you can definitely... Oh, the written directions, guys, I will have that on in several places. You'll be able to find it on the Humble Beads page, the Great Bead Extravaganza group, and it will also be posted on the blog on my website. So on my website, there's a blog section, and it will be posted on there, too. So all three of those places will have it, and I'll make sure you guys get that information. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. Have fun with the rest of the afternoon's group. We have Cynthia Thornton and Azalea from Green Girl Studios coming up next at 3.15. So you guys have enough time to um, actually take a break. <laughs> uh, Kimberly, I don't sell seed beads on my website, but I know um, we have other sellers that sell seed beads. So I have them in the kits. And, um, ooh. Wendy asks, can you use 20, uh, 22 gauge wire with this project? Um, Wendy, you can. It just, it works a little better with 24 because it has a little bit more um, body to it. It doesn't move around quite as much. So just keep in mind that they're not going to be quite as sturdy if you use the 22 gauge wire. So my tip if you're going to use 22 gauge wire is to make smaller leaves and they would work good for the earring ones. The, um, the necklace one where it's going to get bumped around a little bit more, I would definitely try to get the 24 gauge wire. I am saying that right. It's 22 gauge wire. No, 22 gauge wire is thicker. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, you can use 22 gauge wire. Give it a try. Um, it's it's a very minimal amount with the 22 gauge wire from 24 so give it a try see how it works and um all right oh luann asked where can i find the b table wednesdays that's on my humble beads facebook page so you guys go over to humble beads on facebook and like and follow my page so that you guys can get those updates i um I do a free project every Wednesday, and if you are a follower of the page, then they'll send you um, little updates when when I'm scheduled to go on. 
Oh, yes, we got our giveaway. Helena, thank you. I almost forgot about that. Okay. So let's do our giveaway. And um, I'm going to do two $30 Humble Beads gift certificates is what I'm going to use. I mean, giveaway. And so how we're going to do this is it's going to work based on um, the first comment that I see. So it may not be the first comment that you see, but it's going to be the first comment that I see. Um, so, you know, based on how time, how things pop up, it may look like you might have been the winner, but if it's the first ones that I'm going to see. Okay. So you don't get, you guys, you don't need to um, put TGBE. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> One second. You guys are so excited. All right. We haven't started yet. Okay, you guys. I'm going to give you guys a minute to calm down because everybody's putting in hashtag TGBE. Remember, we're all independent businesses and we all do this differently. So I'm going to ask a question. The first person to leave a comment that answers the question correctly, well, the first two people are going to win the gift certificate. And here comes the question. And I will be looking for the first two people that answer. What was the name of the knot? that I used on the necklace. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so what was the name of that knot that I used on the necklace? And I'm looking for that winners. I know it's a stumper, right? Oh, here we go. We got lots of answers. I'm gonna look down and see the first two. Oh, is candy. Um, I don't know how to say your last name. Candy, Candy, Costelic, and then Betsy Simmons. The name of the um, knot is the Cat's Paw Knot. So Betsy Simmons and Candy Cost Costelic. Oh, you're such a good um, Facebook watcher. I mean, YouTube watcher. You're here every week. and I just don't know how to say your last name. But Candy, you know who you are. Um, yeah, you two are the winners. Yes, cat paws not. You guys were all quick, but oh, the uh, Facebook just goes by super fast. Okay, so those are my two winners, Ca Candy and Betsy Sim Simon or Simon. I'm terrible with last names. I think it's Simon. Yeah, you two are the winners. So I will be um, sending you a message with your $30 gift certificates. Speaking of gift certificates, do not forget to go over to the Great Bead Extravaganza and sign up for that giveaway. We have $50 Humble Beads gift certificates in all three of the bags. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I took up more of your time than I thought I was going to. You have 20 minutes until Cynthia and... Oh, thank you. Costelic. 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 Here we go. <laughs> Candy, thanks for being such a good sport. I really appreciate you. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy the rest of the presentations. We have a fantastic lineup for the rest of the day. I'm going to be looking forward to watching along with you guys. And don't forget, uh, Green Girl Studios up next at 315. You don't want to miss these two creative powerhouses. Can't wait to see what Azalea and uh, 